Thank you for turning to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at, an, at kind of an oddment in the uh, official traveler universe, kind of a barbaric practice, and that is the right of ascension to the throne through assassination. So the right of assassination. A uh, very peculiar thing for an otherwise pretty civilized, advanced civilization. I'm going to go into where this uh, right came from, uh, another right that kind of went along with it, and then how ultimately it was used uh, in 1116 uh, to disrupt the, uh, the empire as we know it. So today we're going to take a look at the right of assassination. For the information on today's uh, topic, the right of assassination, I went to the Third Imperium source book that was put out by Mongoose uh, late in 2021. I did a video on that back in early December of last year where I took a look at the whole book. And at the time, I commented how impressed I was on the history section. There are certainly other traveler books that offer information on the right of assassination and traveler history, but I thought I would use the newest source that I had, and I'll, I'll show the, the book uh, at the end here, but I thought I'd use the newest source that I had, and this is a pretty complete history of the Imperium. So the right of assassination... This unorthodox method of selecting a new emperor was devised after the selection of Cleon III proved to be a bad one. The moot approved the ability to select a new emperor by right of assassination. This controversial method, which would later cause great strife, included three key tenets. First, the assassin must be a member of the high nobility. Second, the assassin must kill the emperor by her or his own hand in the presence of witnesses. And third, the moot must then approve the new emperor just as they would under normal circumstances. And then the last little codicil here, which I really like, should the last of the three tenets fail to occur, in other words, if the moot does not uh, approve them as uh, emperor, the assassin could be tried for murder in a court of law, depending on the circumstances. So this is kind of a high roll, all or nothing kind of situation uh, to put yourself on the throne. And a little bit of background as to where it came from is from the dynastic crisis. When Martin II died in 244, he not only left the Vargir campaigns partially completed, he left no heir. And this caused a dynastic crisis for a little bit as everybody was claiming they had an individual right to the Iridium throne. Well, the moot eventually gave in to the claim of... Uh, the, the claim which was to of Cleon II's great-great-great-grandson who took the throne is Cleon III. He was made emperor in 244 as emperor, and it was an unmitigated disaster. Uh, the emperor exhibited many sociopathic and psychopathic behaviors, none more severe than his penchant for murdering those who disagreed with him. Cleon III shot, stabbed, impaled, and threw members of the moot off the ledges of the Grand Palace, if they were found to be disagreeable, it did not take long for the moot to raise, realize their error. Cleon the Mad, as he had become known, had to be dealt with. Unfortunately, there were no devices for addressing this unprecedented situation. There was no way to unseat a sitting emperor. Desperate times called for desperate measures. Along comes Porphyria, the oldest issue of the grandnephew of Martin II. She took the offer... offer by the remaining members of the moot, the Chancellor himself had been murdered by Cleon, to ascend the throne by a new method, the right of assassination. Per dictates of this new convention, Porphyria killed Cleon by her own hand. The fact that Porphyria was not a skilled combatant is largely overlooked by modern historians. Some claim that Cleon was mortally wounded by a moot-sponsored hit team, a combat veteran in service to one of the high nobles, or possibly even Porphyria's own bodyguard after which Porphyria herself came onto the scene and delivered the coup de grace in front of witnesses. Whatever the case, the mood approved the action. She has made Empress Porphyria I in 245. So that's the origin of the right of assassination. That's pretty interesting that uh, a culture as advanced as the Empire, even at this point in the 244-245 era, would devolve to something as seemingly barbaric as a right of assassination for the throne. Uh, one of the things I love about Traveler, if you read Traveler, and if you're at all even a casual uh, friend of history, of our history, you see a lot of uh, analogs between the Traveler 
official travel universe, specifically the Third Imperium, uh, and a lot of analogs between it and ancient Rome. There were a lot of things that uh, I think were pulled from ancient Rome, from history, to give us the, uh, the Third Imperium. And I'm fine with that. I'm a big fan of ancient Roman history. It's a fascinating time uh, in history. And uh, frankly, this was something that they did too. Now we're going to go up into the year 606, at the end of the First Frontier War. Uh, Grand Admiral Olav Holt Plankwell gathered what remained of his fleet and feeling that the Imperium had not supported the Spinward Marches in their First Frontier War, said the not heck to this, and he went to capital. He arrived in 606, supposedly to celebrate the victorious efforts of the First Frontier War, but promptly murdered Empress Jacqueline and declared himself Emperor Olav I by right of assassination. It was pretty interesting that uh, he was just able to walk in and, and declare this thing, which by that time was a couple of hundred years old. This unfortunately set off the Emperors of the Flag, who ruled the Imperium over the next uh, succession of the Emperors of the Flag, that ruled the Imperium over the next 13 years. Basically, the right of assassination got a cousin, and that was the right of fleet control. You could show up like Julius Caesar crossing the Rubicon and marching into Rome at the head of your army, daring anyone to do anything about it. You could show up at capital with your fleet in hand and say, guess who's the new emperor? And if there weren't enough fleet assets on the other side to oppose you, you got the crown. It was interesting that we not only had the right of assassination, but then we developed the right of fleet control. And this led to a great deal of problems in the 600s. From 609 to 622, there were a bunch of short-lived emperors as all these different little pockets of the fleet gathered and supported their guy. This, again, there's an analog in ancient Rome for this. So it, it's a pretty cool time, and I like it. And here we have a nice look, and this is one of the reasons I chose this for my example uh, of the right of assassination. Here's a look at all of the emperors during that time. So we start from 606 and go all the way through to 622. And then finally, we get Grand Admiral Arbalatra Alcalikoi. Sorry, Akalikoi. Sorry, I, I struggle with Vellani names. Uh, she finally puts an end to it through her own time of coming in with her fleet. And she comes from the Spinward Marches also and says, the heck with this, we're going to put a stop to this. But she doesn't take the throne. She sets herself up as a regent to hold the throne while the moot goes ahead and exercises their lawful power to place someone on the throne. Of course, her long-term plan was that things would calm down, she would sit as regent, and eventually the moot would elevate her to empress, which is what happened. But it brought stability back into the empire. It took out this, this era of instability. And the other real expression, there are a few other times that uh, right of assassination or right of fleet control were used to pass the throne. But the final time, at least if you stay in the official Traveler Universe timeline, is in 1116, when Dolomor, Dolinor of Ailelish shoots and kills Strephon, who's sitting on the throne at the time, kills Strephon's wife and heir, and uh, declares himself emperor by right of assassination. As everyone knows, of course, that kicked off the rebellion era and gave us the mega traveler era of traveler. So whether you like it or not, that is official traveler universe. I played many games in the official traveler universe. It was a fun time to play. Uh, I kind of, when GURPS came back, I'd always kept a Golden Age campaign going where we were playing and it was around 1105. When GURPS Traveler came out and did the alternate timeline where there was no assassination and the Imperium just continued, I kind of went with that. Much as I did enjoy Mega Traveler as a whole, and I did enjoy reading it, and on a personal note, that's a very fun time in my life. 1987, that's when my wife and I got married um, in our first apartment together after our marriage. It was just a, a good time for me. 1987 into, you know, the end of Mega Traveler around 93. And then, of course, by the time 93 rolled around, I had been a dad for a year or two. So I have a lot of uh, fond memories of New Era of reading that while my oldest son was a baby and things like that. So 
all this is, is kind of stuff I am fond of and I do remember fondly, but I don't really play anymore. So that's, I just want to touch on that. But back to the topic at hand, the right of assassination. Once the rebellion came up and then the empire fell to virus and everything else, this kind of all went away in the official travel universe. Because the Imperium was gone, uh, it really doesn't come back up. In some of the 1248 stuff that was written and published after the New Era was done, it was published in the early 2000s, some of that stuff shows that the Keepers of the Flame and everything were over in the Spinward Marches, they had survived virus virtually intact, and they would declare themselves eventually the Fourth Imperium. That's some neat reading if you want to stay with the, the official travel universe. Go ahead and grab those. Those are on some of the Far Future Enterprise discs and things like that. I am going to take a more in-depth look at those uh, sometime down the line. I really enjoy those. So anyway, that's a quick look at uh, something I always found surprising to be in the official travel universe, the right of assassination, and of course the right of fleet control in order for you to come in as a high noble and take the throne for your own. Uh, Kind of neat, adds a lot of uh, flavor to it. I thought when they used that as the impetus for the rebellion, I thought that was pretty interesting. They'd already published the history of Traveler a couple of times, of course, and so we knew about the uh, right of assassination. It was just kind of neat to see it come out historically. I did promise to show the cover of the Third Imperium book, and I want to make a comment about why this is on my tablet. I am... No spring chicken, as you may know if you followed my ch channel for a while. And I have found out that my I'd be leaving a lot of stuff to my wife and kids if I were to pass. And they don't necessarily want anything to do with it. So what I've started to do with my various collections is collect some of them electronically. And this is one I did choose to collect electronically. I don't have the physical book of this. Because this isn't something I'm going to pull out and have at my side while I'm running a game. This is research material. This is something that I don't really need a physical copy for. And I've been doing that more and more uh, in the last several years. I'm deciding if it's a rule book, like the core rule book or the forthcoming high guard, yeah, I'm absolutely going to buy print copies of those simply because I, I'll need those at the table. I'll have to refer to them. And I find a, a tablet rather clumsy to look for rules in. And since you get the PDF along with the physical copy when you buy it through Mongoose, what's not to love? So, but other rule books that aren't rule books, per se, I generally am not picking up the physical copy, both to save a little bit of money, but also to save storage. And this is a good example of one that I chose to just buy electronically. Would I like to have the physical book? Yes, I'd love to. But storage is a bit of an issue these days. I have a rather extensive collection. And, as I've said, I have no one really to, to hand this down to. Not complaining, but uh, while both my sons enjoy playing Traveler, neither one of them really reads it. So, it's just where I am in my life. I've mentioned this before on the channel. I just want to explain why I just had the tablet version of this, and that's exactly why. So, that's it for today on page 121. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you liked the topic. If you did, please uh, leave some comments. I'm always open to constructive criticisms. Uh, any suggestions of topics to cover in Traveler? I'm going to start going a little bit more into the actual history of the official Traveler universe, at least up into 1105. I'm going to touch on a couple of topics, and I might even start out a series of the history of the OTU from my own perspective. Uh, I'll, I'll be doing official Traveler universe things, uh, showing it in different ta uh, forms, but it's going to be my take on the OTU. So that's coming down the line. Uh, but for today, this is all I've got. I hope you liked it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the right of assassination. And, uh, you know, let me know how it affected your campaign. Uh, rebellion was a big, big deal. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Remember the Patreon, if you would. And I'll see you next time on page 121.